Good afternoon and welcome to Piping Up, presented by the Tabernacle Choir at Temple Square. I'm your host, Luke Howard. In just a few days, we'll observe the 20th anniversary of the terrorist attacks that took place on September 11, 2001. Richard Elliott, our organist today on Piping Up, has chosen a program that ties into the memories of that tragic event and the emotions stirred by it. He opens with Aaron Copeland's 1942 Fanfare for the Common Man, which was performed at the dedication of the National September 11 Museum at Ground Zero in 2014, and at many other memorial events as well. And then we'll hear the prelude on Brother James's Air from 1958 by the American organist, teacher, and composer, Searle Wright. Brother James's Air, composed in 1915 by the Scottish writer James Bain, is an exquisite setting of Psalm 23. In his address to the nation on the evening of September 11, 2001, US President George W. Bush quoted from Psalm 23, offering to the nation the comfort that comes from a higher power. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me.
In the immediate aftermath of the September 11 attacks, one of the key musical responses was a longing to hear Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings. It was requested over and over again on radio shows and quickly inserted into concert programs by orchestras across the country. In London, the program for the last night of the proms, which was scheduled for September 15, was immediately revised. The second half of the program opened with Barber's Adagio instead of the traditional English patriotic favorites. It was a way of affirming that while the attacks took place on American soil, the tragedy was global, felt by all of humanity. Why this piece? A number of years ago, the British Broadcasting Corporation surveyed its viewers to identify the saddest piece of music they knew. An online poll was set up and listeners were invited to choose from the five most frequently nominated compositions. Barber's Adagio for Strings gained more votes in the final tally than the other four works combined. And yet, when Sam Barber originally composed this music in 1936, he didn't think it was sad at all. He knew it was well written. Even the early critics described it as sincere, deeply felt and genuine, but nobody thought it was sad. That didn't happen until this music was broadcast to the nation at the radio announcement of President Roosevelt's sudden and unexpected death in 1945. Over the ensuing years, it became a customary anthem of grief. Samuel Barber was annoyed at first that this music had taken on a funereal tinge, but he must have come to terms with it eventually. In 1967, he wrote his own choral arrangement of the Adagio using the Latin text of the Agnus Dei. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Grant us thy peace. Music isn't really a universal language, but sometimes it comes very close. Whether performed with or without words, Barber's Adagio for Strings continues to signify for almost all its hearers profound feelings of loss and grief, but also a yearning for mercy and divine peace. That is as true today as it was 20 years ago when it was music that we desperately needed to hear. Richard Elliott will now perform William Strickland's organ transcription of Samuel Barber's Adagio for Strings, first published in 1949 with Barber's approval.
Next, Richard plays his own arrangements of the pioneer hymn, Come, Come Ye Saints, and a work he has titled In Cloud or Sea, a combination of the hymn tunes from Jesus, Savior, Pilot Me, and Rock of Ages. The title, which alludes to the two hymns, is actually taken from a verse in 1 Corinthians that describes how Moses led the children of Israel with divine power under the cloud and through the sea.
When Rafe Vaughan Williams edited and assembled the English hymnal in 1906, he included some hymn tunes he had composed himself. To one of these tunes, he gave the name Sine Nomine, which is simply Latin for without a name. He wrote this tune especially for the hymn For All the Saints, and it's widely regarded as one of the finest hymn tunes of the 20th century. An earlier tune associated with this same hymn was Joseph Barnby's Sarum, published in 1868. Richard closes today's program now with John Weaver's snappy arrangement of Sine Nomine, which combines it with the Sarum tune in the style of a New Orleans jazz funeral march. And you might hear a little snippet of When the Saints Go Marching In as well.
Thank you for watching today's episode of Piping Up with organist Richard Elliott. You are always welcome to come back for the weekly live stream of these concerts, and previous episodes are also available for on-demand viewing. More information about this program, including a link to submit listener requests, can be found at tabchoir.org slash piping up. Piping Up, organ concerts at Temple Square, streams live every Wednesday at noon Mountain Time on the Tabernacle Choir's website, its Facebook page and YouTube channel, and at broadcasts.churchofjesuschrist.org.